It's been a rough year for regionals, just got worse. Moody's Investor Services uh, has announced a cut rating for several small to mid-sized lenders, including M&T Bank and Pinnacle Financial. The agency flagged concerns over commercial real estate risks, as well as possible regulatory capital weakness. Moody's also lowered its outlook for nearly a dozen banks, including Capital One, Citizens Financial, leaving one to wonder, are we in for another banking crisis this year? Joining us now to discuss is Kevin Flanagan, Wisdom Tree Head of fixed income strategy. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us today. So first off, uh, in terms of like your reaction to this news out today, this seems like it was a surprise. Uh, are you still concerned about issues within the regional banking sector? Well, you know, it, it was a surprise only because we've we've tended to put things on the back burner after what you all were mentioning earlier with SVB and some of the other banks back in March. But the underlying issues were always still there. And I think that's what Moody's was responding to. So, you know, I mean, we've talked about it before. Bank runs. Is it going to be a bank walk? If you look at deposit rates, what are being paid there? Or you could get 5%, say, in, in treasury floating rate notes, treasury bills. You know, so, so some of these issues in commercial real estate, they're not going away anytime soon. But there is good news. And, and the good news is something we didn't have, say, five months ago was the bank term funding program from the Fed. And, and that will play, I think, a very important role in giving investors, I think, some confidence or some comfort that what appears to be a regional banking issue does not become a systemic banking issue. Kevin, if we do see, though, some of those six larger banks that were placed on review for a potential downgrade here from Moody's, will that at all change your outlook, change your strategy, given the fact that maybe some of the issues are wider spread than many invest investors had initially anticipated? Well, not really. You know why? Because uh, we've been following Chairman Powell and, and in somewhat interestingly, in his press conferences following the last couple of Fed meetings and in the policy statement itself from the Fed, they always are mentioning tightening financial conditions from the regional bank stresses or turmoils. So once again, something that was there to, that just kind of went away, it was back on, on the back burner on simmer and, and now being brought out again more to the front end of the burner, more of a, a boiling kind of situation, especially when you get a rating agency act like that. So I, I think tighter financial conditions in conjunction with the Fed rate hikes leads you to believe that at some point the economy is probably going to have to give up some ground and, and maybe you finally do get a negative quarter of GDP. Uh, Kevin, I want to ask you, so there's been obviously talk of more regulation with regard to the regional banks. If and when regulation gets tighter uh, for that part of the banking sector, uh, what does that signal for the bond market? Does it bode well for the bond market? Well, I mean, I mean, to your point, you know, the, the regulatory aspect takes time uh, to be administered and then to actually come into and be signed into law. So I think, you know, for for the more intermediate term impact, there probably isn't going to be all that much. I think what you saw today, though, was a perfect example of maybe what investors should expect going forward. Notwithstanding the Fitch downgrade last week, the global investment community, just like an S&P downgrade in 2011, still view treasuries as the store of value. So in times of uncertainty, in times of risk off, money flows into treasuries. Today was a perfect, perfect example of that. I heard in your prior segment talking about the disappointing Chinese trade data. You have the Moody's action today. You had um, um, an Italian tax uh, on profit windfalls for banks over there. So all of that created this kind of risk off environment today. And what happens? The 10 year Treasury yield drops about eight or nine basis points. Kevin, let's talk a little bit more about that trade data out of China, because we did see a slump in Chinese imports and exports in the month of July. It was far worse than expected. China's imports are down more than 12 percent in the last year. Exports contracting 14 and a half percent. How are you looking at this from an investment perspective and really what it highlights or what it shows just about some of the worries about the slowing global economy and what that means for investors here in the U.S.? Well, you, you hit the nail on the head, right? I, I think this is indicative of a slowing global economy. So China gets hit on both fronts of, of trade on that front, the import and the export side of the ledger. And I think going forward, you know, one should probably, you know, if you're looking to invest, 
and, and this is a bond guy talking, but if you're looking to invest, I think, into Asia, yeah, you know, perhaps Japan is an area that investors may look to as an alternative, a China alternative coming into Japan. And I know we've been seeing or witnessing flows on that front. And Kevin, I want to ask you uh, again, given some of that weakness in the uh, in the so-called uh, reopening recovery that we've seen in China, what is the what are the protective measures that uh, an investor needs to take in this kind of climate? And again, I know that your expertise is obviously fixed income and that's your focus. So how can one be protective in this kind of market? Well, you know, I, I just a, a balanced portfolio, right? I, I think you need to to look at the state of where things are here on August eighth, twenty twenty three. Completely different than what we had expected, right? I think if we had been talking six months ago, we we'd probably be saying, "How long do you think this recession is going to last?" So things change, and things don't always go according to scripts that appear to be what everybody's talking about. So I would say a balanced portfolio, and on the bond side, a barbell strategy. So you're really not taking a, a rate call per se. In other words, you you have short duration, you have long duration, and, and you're kind of mixing the two together. So you don't have to make a specific rate call. So you don't have to be concerned. Should I go long duration? Should I be short here? And taking advantage of what the yield curve is giving you at this stage of the game, which as I mentioned earlier, you know, are rates that we haven't seen in quite some time. A, a generation of investors, I would argue, have not seen 5% Treasury yields, especially in areas like floating rate notes. Kevin, do you think the Treasury market, do you think it's getting the message from the Fed? Do you think it's finally pricing in what's expected in terms of this higher for longer environment that Powell, like you said, has been calling for now for quite some time or warning about for quite some time? Yeah, I, I mean, that's a great question. And I think the problem with the Fed and the Fed chairman was their transitory argument. So I think it took the markets longer perhaps than what normally would be the case to come around to the Fed messaging. I find it interesting that there is apparently, from what you keep reading about, a little bit of a mini battle going on at the Fed between the moderates who want to stop rate hikes, and then you have the Fed governors like Waller of the world, you know, speaking about maybe we need still yet another rate hike. So I think that dynamic in the Fed is going to continue, but the bottom line message I think that's important. And you just mentioned it, rates higher for longer, even though we may be at or close to the end of this rate hike cycle, what we're not close to are Fed rate cuts. And that's a dramatic difference from what we would have been talking about just a couple months ago. Well, we will certainly see if the fixed income uh, and equity market has priced uh, higher for longer correctly soon. Kevin Flanagan, Wisdom Tree Head of Fixed Income Strategy. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you.